What's up, y'all? We at ACAF, another legendary conversation with a real Philly legend. A legend. Legend. Oh, Beanie Siegel. Mac. Mittens. A lot of names. Yeah. A lot of names. You know what I mean? Yeah, you coming out. You're not an easy man to get. Like, honestly, and, and we honored because he doesn't do this a lot. You know what I mean? I was like, hey, like, he, he doesn't, he really does interviews. So I appreciate him coming down, coming. Why don't you do interviews often? Why don't you go on, like, Breakfast Club, you know what I'm saying? Platforms like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't like the gossip. Yeah, a lot of a lot of them platforms is good, like for uh, promoting product and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. uh, I uh, tend to stay away from. It. You don't think you got a lot to say to the people, like a lot of wisdom and knowledge. I mean, yeah, the interviews be based on that, mm -hmm. and that's what they want. But you know, they say uh, good news is no news, right? So. I feel you. Yeah, no news. Yeah, no, it, 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 but there's a lot going on. Even like that, that's going on. I was like, like you'll be a good person to talk about because I wanted to talk about like how how the current things as far as like every the, the main thing right now the the Jew thing and and everybody yeah. like talking about Kanye West, John Kanye yeah. West, and all that. Kanye, yeah, Kyrie, right? Yeah. Like, and I I see how you move. I'm like, well, he he more low key, but he's still connected. So it's like. Yeah. Like, I, I like you smart, you want you wanted something. Yeah. Um, I want to start with your upbringing, you know what I'm saying? Like, how was your, um, the childhood, like, how was your household in South Philly in the 70s? How was that? Oh, man. Two-parent household, siblings? Yeah, yeah, well, no. Uh, one parent, mm -hmm. siblings, three siblings. I guess, it, you know, it was like any average one. 30 kids on the block having fun. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> uh, I, um, you know, Philly, Philly, man. Philadelphia, you know. So yeah. did, it, did it start on Seagull Street? Like, is no. that what you at the beginning? Like, no, the, the uh, Seagull Street, I was just, I guess you could say I was, uh, that's why I started smelling myself a little bit mm. on Seagull Street. Mm. Yeah. What age did you move to Seagull Street? What age did you drop off the porch? Shit. The porch? Damn. I would say, uh, maybe nine, ten. That's young. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So, like, we started at the beginning. So, I remember, like, being in South Philly, it's like, when you came out, it's like, you put Seagull Street on the map, but it's like, you already had a name before that. Yeah. Like you would like, so yeah. you, that was that, that, that was that beans. Like that's how you got like that. Like, yeah, that was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, so how did the rap start? Cause like I said, you was somebody before you was rapping already. Yeah. Well, uh, I really started at home with my skills. I was, uh, it's, it's funny. I'm gonna give y'all this. Uh, it started seriously. Well, let me back it up. And give y'all the full story. The rap for me was in the 80s. You know, growing up in Philly, going to the block parties, you know, and seeing the local uh rappers rap. I was always fascinated with it. You know, and uh I would say uh it was two cats particular. Their name was Jazz Fresh mm -hmm. and Snooze B. Watching them, like... Where were they from? South Philly. Oh, shit. And Snooze lived on the block, so, you know, we always had the block parties. And, and just watching how they, uh, like, rock the, the, the mic and t tear the block up. And, you know, the, 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 the love that they got, it was like I fell in love with, with hip-hop, period. Mm. And uh, you know that whole scene, the early like the early '80s, like graffiti. I did it. I did it all. I did it all. Graffiti, uh, believe it or not, the the break dancing mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jazz Fresh played a major major part in that because when I thought I knew how to rap, I I just wanted to rap. He he really like took me under his wing. Like I'm talking about young. I'm. I had to be, like I said, probably like nine, ten years old. He used to 
it just like had me around when he would go to different blocks and battle people. I used to, he used to let me go with him. And, uh, when I started, uh, he started showing me how to, you know, write, write raps and stuff. So I remember a couple years fast forward, I might have been, uh, 14, 15, I'm like skipping stuff, but I went to Slayton Farms. I went to a juvenile facility and people up there was rapping. And I had a couple raps, but when I ran into people that was taking rap, like super serious, that was my age, I was like, man, I got to step my game up. So my man, Larry Nettles, he talked me in the battle when this kid, I never forget his name, was Mason. He was hot too. He talked me in the battle and this kid, Mason, and that's all he did was write raps every day, all day. And I battled him. Mm -hmm. But when I battled him, I battled him with jazz fresh rhymes. Mm. Cause I knew all his raps from being with him. Mm. So I battled him for jazz fresh rhymes. I got all his canteen. And like two weeks later, there was a show that used to come on every Saturday, Lady B. And Jazz Fresh was on her show. And he spit one of those raps of his that I used to battle the boy Mesa with. And it was like, they was they came to the cottage. It was like, no, he gotta get that money back. He was fighting around. My man Larry's like, he ain't giving up nothing. Uh, okay. So it was a talent show coming up. They was like, no, they got to battle again. They was like, well, I know it ain't going to be right using somebody else's raps. It's like, man, they going to battle it again. And you got to talk about. So they had the subjects like where you, you couldn't, you had to write it. So. Right. We wound up battling, so I had to, my man last like, man, it's like, damn, like, you know, he was fuck out here and all. That's my man. But when we got back to the unit, he was like, man, we ain't giving them niggas back that shit. You got to write some shit. So I'm like, we, that's when I really started like writing, writing. Mm -hmm. And all my raps was about slating farms. So they knew like these rhymes, like. You couldn't make this up. Like mm -hmm. I had to write them joints and I wound up crushing it. You remember them joints? That's how you remember No, that's a crazy well, I had to write, I had to write the raps about the whole slant far from then. I just started writing like every day. And I remember getting out of Slayton Farms and it was a cat named Rahisi. Mm -hmm. I met him. And he was really like, because I left it alone. I was like off and on with it. I had left it alone. And he was like going around like crushing people. He was nice. He really taught me song structure, like how to make a song. But he used to say I used to, I was too hard because from then I, I would only write about the shit that I was doing or I seen or stuff that people could relate to like right. every day or what. And like right. mm. the fairy tale. Raps and it's funny because mm -hmm. he took me to a rap battle, and I believe it was it was damn what's that I know what's them two clubs it was yeah dances and what's that name of that other club the kids Fever uh, uh, um, Club Fever I think it was he took me to Fever to this rap battle we go to Fever to the rap battle and the guy Mason that I battled was in the battle and he he won the battle right because i wasn't in it but he won the battle because he used three of the right he was saying my rhymes from up slating farms that was crazy yeah that, that shit was crazy true story too true you, know, you put some work in to get your name but these artists telling you stuff in the beginning that's heavy yeah, yeah. i'm holding an artifact that is from molly this is from the, the Maasai people, and this is a hunter's kit. See, is authentic from Ali. But uh, I like how, like, when people say about you, like, everybody knows, like, yo, 
when Beans rap, he rapping his life, he rapping what he did. Yeah. Like, yeah, he wanted the realest. But to see how you started, you started writing rhymes about the environment you was in and it made, and then like, that's how you, okay? That's how, that's your birth too. That's heavy. Yeah. During that time, did you know, um, did you realize yourself being a legend during that time? Nah. You picture, picture yourself being in this position? Never. Nah, it wasn't nothing that I was, I just knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I didn't take rap serious. I didn't understand it. Like, that I can be, that, that people looked at me like on that level. Because I was from the block. Like, I ain't, I ain't seen nothing in it but past time. Mm -hmm. At first, in the beginning, by the time I really caught on, like, yo, this is crazy. It was like hmm. when you first when you first realized, like, I can make some something out of this, like, or I'm, I'm the hottest rapper. When did you realize, like, I never looked at myself as the hottest rapper. You don't think so? Nah. When people tell you that, what you how you feel? Let me see that. Uh, I don't know. It. it I always denied that. I never, I never looked at it like I'm, I was the best or quote unquote the king. Of, mm. You know what I'm saying? I never looked at it like that. So, so when that's weird, because I don't even listen to my own music. Okay. Yeah. yeah I barely listen to my own raps. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, because you came out with the, your first joint, the best at being the Colin Kev. Yeah. And that you in the independent at that time, right? Um. No, I ain't had no, I, I ain't, when we first started it. Cause that was your first tape, right? Yeah, first mixtape. Yeah, but I, I, we did it so fast. I think we started it when I had got signed to Rockefeller. Oh. I, I was signed to Rockefeller, but I ain't had no music out. So okay. I had a couple, I had a couple, uh, so you did that hundred bars on like like ninety bars. You wouldn't have, you were signed at that time. Yeah, when I did a thousand bars, that was that's my bad. Thousand thousand bars, yeah. Yeah, I was signed to Rock and Fire. How was it like um, being signed to Rock? Like, what was that like? At that age, you got signed with um, Rockefeller label. I mean, that was it was that was that was hard. That was a real like accomplishment. Like I still was like in the beginning, like I couldn't believe it. I used to ride back from New York when my man Paco was like, Paco, yo, you believe this shit? And we used to be, he used to be, I told you. Cause like, like when you said people, like he, he a big part of my man Paco, he a big part of the Benny Siegel story. Who? Paco. Who's Paco? One of my childhood friends. Okay. Yeah, my man Paco, he really like, he uh he was probably was the first that that told me that I was on that level of rappers that was in the industry. He was like, man, you gotta just keep writing. You better than them. Mm -hmm. And every night we used to be we used to be hustling, selling drugs. We on the on the graveyard shift and we'd be in the uh in the crack house. And I'd just be writing raps in there. And it's funny because we'd go, we used to ride up to New York and buy these Ron G mixtapes. And we had this little radio in there. And Paco used to, because there wasn't no instrumentals or nothing back, back then. Mm. So he used to have it, we used to have this little radio and we have our mixtapes. Then we done went up New York the weekend and, and came back with all these mixtapes. And he used to turn the, uh, they had the equalizers on the, on the radio down. He used to turn the bass all the way up on the radio and turn the treble all the way down to like drown out the words. Mm -hmm. So you could just hear like the beat like rocking. And that was like my instrumentals. And he used to play them joints and I used to be sitting in the spot just right into them joints all night. Really stopped in just to get some coffee, man. They got some Cameroonian coffee that's slamming. Yeah, yeah. If y'all like coffee, this is the place to come get it. You know? Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, me and Jay Z. Your first time, or how was he meeting him the first time? Was that how you got signed? I'm sorry, cut you off. Like the meeting Jay Z part, like yeah. Okay, yeah, got my beverage on. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, how was it? That's I credit that the Phillies most wanted. I credit that the Phillies most wanted because they actually had a meeting with Rockefeller because Rockefeller was looking to sign them. And they invited me 
to take the ride to go up to the meeting because uh, Bubonic from uh, Philly's Most Wanted, he was like another one that gave me that that look right. like, yo, you nice. Mm -hmm. And for him to say that, because to me, like he was one of the illest from Philly at the time. I had people don't know Bonnie. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy with it. And uh, he was like, man, you should come up there, man. Take this ride with us. And he wound up not even going. And I went up there, and there was some cats from New York. And, you know, they was in the room. Jay was actually recording a song. Uh, it was all good a week ago with Too Short. Too Short. Listen to that, John, before he walked in. Yeah, Too Short was in that, uh, on that record. He was in a session, and, you know, people was rhyming. And it turned into a little Philly, New York thing with Most Wanted and these other kids from New York. And they said some slick Philly line. And I'm like, damn, they try to line us up in this joint? And I wasn't even supposed to rap. I just was dead. And I remember Jay like asking, like, anybody else got any raps? And you run who rhyme? And I was like, yeah, I do. I started rapping and. After I started rapping, nobody rapped. Mm. Mm. That was it. It was rap. Yeah. Mm. After I started rapping, nobody rapped no more. Yeah. So did you like, uh, was Jay-Z like the same how he is back then? Or was he different? Were you, did, could you see him on this type of uh, level back then? All right, what you mean? It's like billionaire status, like a mogul in the culture type stuff. Oh, of course he wasn't billionaire status then. Was that, I was see, seeing this still, see that? Could you see it? See the persona, he still, yeah, the same. Gotcha. Yeah, the same. Yeah, I was gonna say about the J part with you, like people still respect you as like, like they be like, yo, J and like respected beings, cause like on, on all the songs y'all did, yeah, it's like, no, they can't say he, he, he tops you. Like, it's like, it's like the neck to neck type, like, like, uh, once again, it's on. Not too many people can say that. Not too many people can say that. Yeah. Not too many people can say that. Like, like, he, he's, I, like, of course, I don't know him personally, but I could tell he's seen that in you. He like, yo, no, this one right here, he a beast. Yeah. He the one. Like I know, like, like, like I'm not in a relationship, but I know he respects you. He like, like, like he see you, he gotta like if he like if y'all face, he gotta like I ain't gonna lie, you yeah. <laughs> like, like, like cause No, you gotta look at it. That was a that was a challenge. Like mm. I mean, come on, that's Jay-Z. So yeah. and the right, right. How was that? Like the first one y'all was the first song y'all did together. Um, first record that I was on with Jay Z. Or I would say first time y'all made a track. Uh, we could do yeah. that then. Let's do that then. First time. Oh, the first. Track. Oh, all right. I mean, we want. It wasn't just Jay Z. Oh, it was Jay Z, the Locks, Sauce Money. It was it was Reservoir Dogs. That was the first record. So not only Jay Z, you got about Kiss Styles like. And that that was a moment right there. Was like, all right, I'm, 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 I'm rubbing shoulders with the best of them from the beginning. So it was like, and just going in the studio, knowing that like you got to rap after Jay Z. Even that, like shit, Freeway, Chris, you know what I mean, Oskino. Like, just with the Nar Circle with State Property, you know you had to bring your A game. African Culture Art Forum. This is the only place I get my share butter from. Always. It's moisturizing. The it smells good. I absolutely love it. All my friends love it. So I'm here to buy some for my friends. So come to African Culture Forum, 52nd Street, and get your scented share butter. Y'all had the best air in Philly. Like you, Donovan, Alan Iverson. Like that was the best air in Philly, man. Like that's in Philly was like. The, the best ever, like, like you're you're respected nationwide for that time, like who you are now, but that time period, that time yeah. period, like only you can go give off that energy, you give off that that feeling of like original, real street, a man. Like, let me tell you something about yourself. I I seen you at a Yesha Hall, you, you did a reunion concert, and it was um you, and then there's also major major figures came out. Yeah. Lala was there, and you had your sons with you, bro. Yeah, you started talking, bro, and it's like, and it's like you're a grandfather. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 you was talking about how 
it was heavy. Like I also got it in my phone. You yeah. know, I'm sure you after the drum, but you were talking about how like you said what you said in your songs, but like you take responsibility and you want to change and you want to be different. And like you, you had to send up there, you had a message and the people heard it and it was real. And I respected you heavy for that. Cause you know, people will say like, you know, you're 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 a gangster rap, hardcore rapper, so your music might have made change, made people do things in the street that affected Philly to be more violent, right? But at the same time, it's like, it's like that type of lifestyle music. It was like, it was like you, you not say you redeemed yourself, but you said like why you did it. Like, like you could, like you ain't had to do that. You know, I remember you talking at Yesha Hall? Like, like no. <laughs> Daniel, like, uh, yeah, I don't remember. But if I said I got, it, I got I the video. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you Whenever know, I said I said it. No, yeah, you just said some yeah. thorough shit. Damn. Like, yeah, you, you said I'm gonna show you when it's over. Like it was it was yeah. you had the sons up there and you were just talking. You was like, yo, y'all don't got you was basically saying like y'all don't gotta be out like, shooting each other, killing each other, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like that shit is over, that shit is done now. Like you were saying you were saying that shit, that shit was thorough. I mean, it was done then. Mm. You ain't have to do it then. If you listen to the music, I tell you, I go through it. So you wouldn't do it mm. after me. So, you know, even then, like, it's just, uh, I guess, you know, uh, what my grandma would say, when you're a child, you think as a child, because mm. you understand as a child. Right. But when you become a man, you got to put them childish things aside. Right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I wanted to ask you this too, um, in that time period now, and now like the music, a lot of this and dead ops and all that, you feel me? A lot of um, negativity, violence. Like, what's your thoughts on that? The state of hip hop now, what the rappers rapping about now. I mean, it's, it's, it's... And then how can we change that type of music if we can't change it? Some things you gotta let just run its course. Mm -hmm. You gotta let it run its course, right? I mean, I look at it like uh, the powers that be put certain people in certain positions that they want, and it's bigger than just the rappers. That's because you got people out that's that's hot, that's rap, that's that don't get that shot. Right. Because some people don't want them to get that shot. You know what I mean? You gotta look at. I always look at it like you know the things that they market. And, and go behind is, is for a reason. I don't think they want to see another like Jay-Z or Master P or, you know, people to that level. You got to look at it. Now, like a lot of the young kids, they get, they they make a lot of money, you know, doing what they doing, but it, they don't, it's very few of them that last. Gotcha. You know, and when I'm saying last, I'm not talking about that remain hot. Remain alive. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them, they don't last. It's like, like it's, it's yeah, it's crazy. A lot of rappers dying around the country. I mean, like, like you said, what you said, like when I was rapping, you know, you say, you know, gangster rap, this, that, and that, third, we. Right. It was still We was the era, yeah, but we was the era of the drug dealer. Right now, you're looking at the era of the drug user. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, like they whole message is 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 different. We we looked at the drug dealer because it was like right about like popping perks and everything. And we, yeah, it, you know, we rapped about selling it. You know what I mean? We were selling the drugs. Yeah. They. That's what we glorified. Right. Because mm -hmm. it was like there, it was like a a false sense of success, you know, with the drug that like he got money, he could take care, you know what I mean? But now they it's like how much drugs you can use instead of how much drugs you can sell. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? Yo, what up, Brush and Bully BC in the building at 221, 52nd Street, A Cav, grabbing me some all natural products none of the bull crap in it this right here is essential for your skin you can do everything with this you can you put it on your skin you can consume it you can cook with it all natural coconut oil one of my favorite the shea butter right here with the lavender scent oh i can't wait to put that rock with that we got everything from all natural sea moss to body washes shampoos all naturals no artificial chemicals flavors 
None of that. Yo, come out and support black owned business. Are you are you are you done with making music? Like, like are we gonna get another no, I'm always music. I don't know if I'm gonna release music. I make music all the time, but I just uh I don't know, I'm at another chapter. That's how I feel for you. Like, like you yeah. know, what's the chapter now? What you like what you do now? How do you spend your time now? Stay alive. Staying alive, teaching my children, showing them my life and where it's at and the mistakes that I made. And, you know, because when you live that life, man, you miss out on a lot. When you in that, like, and I missed out on a lot. Like, as far as being there, that 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 life can take you away from things that's important because it's, it's really, a, it's a game. Is it is like you live in a false like fantasy, like you to me like you got to be like a real, especially if you got kids, you got to be a real selfish person to want to stay in that environment like without no kind of structure or balance, especially if you really really truly about your your clan, your tribe, many of your children, your family, mm -hmm. because when you won't get the time. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and all that shit raising my kids. Exactly. Nah, I don't want that. So you've been, you've been a real, a real present father and grandfather. Yeah, hands on. Cause it, it's a lot of fire. They present, but they absent. Mm. You know, you can, you can, you can be there, but not be there. You got to follow that. Cause some dudes, they, they go to work nine to five it, and don't even want, feel like doing it. Don't really want to do it, and they, they come on mad at the world. They might take it out on their kids mm. or their mother. And you got the, the the parents that's in the house and they don't have that that patience or whatever to deal with their children. So they stick a tablet or or the phone and go over there and play like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like you said YouTube raising a child, Instagram, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, so you putting out putting out music right now, taking away from you being a presence. That's what you've been on lately. Cause it's hard to check for you like for new stuff, but I understand like you want something like like I mean it's in the music. You know, uh a record I did with Freeway can't go on this way. Uh we make these chips off the gift that we curse with. Hmm. But then my mind drift, I'm not defeating the purpose. Cause you feel like shit when you miss your son first shit. Mm -hmm. But then who gonna pay the bills, supply the mills? It's all in there. You just gotta listen to it. It's all in there. I seen a post on Instagram and you said you said freeway the strongest man you know. Yeah. Can you explain what that means? Yeah. Wow. I seen that. I mean, free. The strongest dude I know is like, because I just look at all the adversities Freeway been through, going through, and to remain so humble and positive like you do, like he gotta be, a, he the strongest dude I know. He free, freedom one of the most honest dudes I know. He always find a way in the shittiest situation to find some good out of it. Sometimes even to a fault. Mm. Mm. If you got that roar, you can tell us all his energy. It's like, yeah. well, we can't. Yeah. And he's in the community yeah. heavy. He's in the community heavy. Good, good. Oh, man. Good, bro, man. Shout out to Freeway. Yeah. What do you think about that, though? That's the one, right? We got mango, lavender, strawberry, honey, vanilla. I'm saying, I said, lavender, lavender guy. Lavender's for the chill. I'll be seeing uh, things they're talking about you too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's, that's love. Like, 
the connection is like, and just to see the respect, the respect. I, the, like, I, how you, um, who's one, who's somebody you looking at in the industry that's like you, you tapping into musically uh, in the industry and in Philly? In the industry that's uh, from Philly right now? And, and from Philly, I was saying both, my, like, in the industry and like up becoming Philly artists that you like. Mm, I got a couple of them that I like. Um, I like OT the world. Yeah, you, you stay with him for a minute. Yeah, I love OT the world. I man, I Leaf Ward is just he one of my top. That's from the city that that put on right now, Leaf Ward. Uh, another cop been riding with, with him for like the last two weeks. I've been on my hollow man. Yeah. Yeah, I've been riding the hollow man heavy. Yeah, the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh far as the new cats. Core. Westville Tour. I like Ryder. Oh, that's Ryder. Very hot. The Philly Goats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You tap in. No, yeah, I rock with them. Yeah. What about um, industry? Like, when you listen to an industry, mainstream. Main in the industry right now, who do I listen to? It means, what's who you know, album, album music? Who you play? I don't even listen to Apple music. Oh, well, it's, well it's yeah. title for Spotify, though. Yeah, I, uh, I'm listening, I listen to oldies. I get my car, I put on Teddy mm. B. Osley Brothers. It's that good music. Yeah. Bobby Womack. Uh, yeah, that's who I listen to. Uh, Donnie Hathaway. Yes. Yeah. How about Otis Red? Of course, Otis Red. I've been on my Donnie though, real heavy though lately. Donnie got a bro got a song called He's My Brother, He Ain't Heavy. I I, I that's a record that I'm I'm gonna put y'all on. Go listen to that, Jimmy. Hey, what's the name of it again? He ain't heavy. He ain't heavy. Yeah. So say if you had an artist now, like like if you was to get into the game, like would you would, you, would like to give us some game? Is it is it now with the, the streaming and how labels are should we be going independent or trying to get a deal to these things? Like like how like it's just a lot going on. Well, it depends. It depends on, you know, who you are as an artist and how, uh, what kind of music you make. Because a lot of people shun away from the 360 deals. But but if you're a person that needs structure, I would say go take a 360 deal. Mm. Take the 360 deal and, and before you go independent, because to be truly, truly independent, you're going to need a lot of money. You gonna need a lot of money, so it's not bad to take the three sixty deal, but just don't lock into the three sixty deal for crazy albums. Mm -hmm. Do the three sixty deal, get all the information that you can get, understand what's going on and how they running it, and set your people up. Everybody that you deal with, that's in that building, as far as the A and Rs and who in charge of the marketing and all that, you get your people and you. Put somebody next to each person that handles your day to day, mm -hmm. and you when you do that, you you they learning their job. So now when you do decide to go independent, everybody that's in position mm -hmm. that you set up in position, I and mean, then they know the jobs of each person that worked on that project or two, depending on how much how much information that you need to get. Uh, like, mm. How would you know if you ain't learn? Yeah. You gotta learn from somebody, that makes sense. So that would that would be what I what I would do. YNG Cheese from Mac and Cheese, Million Dollar yeah. Burger Game. This some unreleased shit I'm called Vibes. I mean, you know, you gonna feel me on this one. You gonna feel me on this one. You gonna feel me on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I watch the one change, I love the most, like they don't give a fuck. 
They, they lost, lost hope, shit, but I ain't giving, giving up. up. Once leaned out, I promise that I'ma live for us. Shit, I got a nigga sitting, I can't see him, I'ma give him bucks. Who'd have thought this was the price we pay? We try and live it up. Who'd have thought he lose his life when they was trying to stick him up? To get my brothers back, they have it all, you know I give it up. Can't be around these fake niggas, no, they can't sit with us. Cause when this war ain't gon' ride, no, they ain't gon' spend with us. Them niggas all talk, but they heart ain't big enough. When your homies die, you ain't slide, you started switching up. Shit, when our homies die, resort to violence, pick them pistols up. Shit, I can't lose another nigga to the street game. Try and get them out, that's all they know, they need to see change. Can't let their kids lose their daddy all over something he say. She say, before they take him out, he let that heat bang. One of my best friends switched up, we had a falling out. He try and make shit up, what's it talk about? It was the time I cracked a head for you. And then we tried to fuck it out. We was in the field, little Miles. He took the smarter route. Everybody wanna be top dog. You ain't do shit, nigga. You ain't earn that spot, dog. Watch them jealous niggas dead get you knocked off. Cause they ain't getting money on their Instagram. Don't pop off. How you mad at me? It ain't my fuck. Cause you ain't hot, dog. Cause you don't get no bitches. Niggas need to get they rocks off. Cause a nigga drippin', I'm on fire. Call me hot sauce. Always been joy. Niggas pimpin', they is not bored for any nigga this. And catch a wiggy from this mob boy. Smokin' dead out. Never pass, I always stop, boy. Damn. Mm-hmm. This just hot. Yo, Shout out AK. Yeah, Shout man. out Million Dollars Worth of Game. You Shout out Mac and Cheese. Way. Mac ain't here, but you know I hold it down. Y and J going up. Mm-hmm. Yo, man. So we're fully having all these artists now. Like, you know, like Art Lily is a, bl- a rapper every block. Is it a way that we you think that we can make money if you get like create like a market or some infrastructure here, to or even showcase venues like big name a lot of showcase venues for even to, to have our own events at like because I feel like it could be a good thing because there's so many people doing it but we not capitalizing because everybody got like be leaving to do it or really don't know what they're doing. I mean, it's I wouldn't put that on Philly. Like you said, they might not know what they're doing, so you might gotta go, like I said, to go get that information. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't put that on the on, on on the artist because sometimes you gotta go away to make the comeback, and it seemed like that every time with with artists in Philly. We don't support each other until somebody else supports us. That's even down to the day out. To me, I would say get rid of every DJ in the city that's over. 35 years old. Hmm. No. Yeah, yeah, oh, he should have been with Tommy, man. <laughs> Get them out of here, man. Every, 30, if, if, 30, all DJs should be 35 and under. Hmm. Because, you know, once you get a certain age, you settle in your in your ways. Right. So saying, I'm not knocking them, but, you know, this music business, you need a, you need the, it's the youth. So, so the rapping you, young sport, rotate, huh? Is rapping young, uh, a young, uh, young man sport. Rapping is, but music's not. Mm. Rapping is, but music's not. You know, it ain't no, it ain't no age limit on music. I mean, if you want to just yeah. be a rapper, I don't think you should be a fifty-five year old rapper, sixty year old rapper. Right. But Ron Osley, how old? They got five, six decades in the music business. Right. You know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You got, you got, uh... Ryan Osley is 80. Yeah. So he got about six decades in the music business, right? 60 years strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Frankie Beverly, still torn. Right. So music is forever. I'm going to question why, why rap not like that. Why can't somebody be rapping to these 70, 75, 80? And perform when the last rap? time you been to an LL Cool J concert? I've done it all, but I There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. You got to stay relevant. Yeah, we got to create. And I was thinking, like, but in Philly, because, like, I, I, I did that. I went to Atlanta and tried to, like, like, try to, quote, unquote, make it out there. We're doing stuff. And it's like, I came back. But it's like, what I realized in Philly is, like, we got great talent down here. Avenues. Like, I realized, like, when I was in Atlanta and I've, like, been in L.A., New York, like, they got avenues. They got places that you can go meet people. Yeah, get connected and because you can go show off your talent. At. I like feel like we lack that. So I'm like that could that infrastructure could be had here better. I feel like we could create something good. I mean, they could be created. You just got to but you gonna need a strong, strong support system from the Philly artist that's in position. You know, from the old to the new, that's in position. Once we, once we, uh, 
once we destroy the uh, crab in a barrel thing, mm. and, and really, you know, I'm, it was a slogan I was going that, I don't know, I think that was probably about 10 years ago. Uh, Philly support Philly? Yeah, SPS, like, and it was just that, a slogan. Mm. Um, uh, what's your thoughts on this? I want to ask you about this. Um, Cause I fully support Philly. What that mean to you? Cause me, in my opinion, I think we gotta support each other as black people first and foremost. But I think Philly support Philly was like it was, was like a city thing. Man, yeah. So I looked at it, but I think it gotta be more so like a race thing. You feel me? Us as a people, not with other races. You know what I'm I mean, I don't know. I mean, cause we the only race that really gonna support each other. All the other races, they like tapped in, locked in. But well, us, we like. You know, he wasn't taught that. You know what I'm saying? Well, we about to get into this. I'm going to have to take it. I ain't never yeah, liked yeah, that yeah. saying. Fully support. Like, no, I think we got blacks got to support blacks. I mean, that's just a slogan. Yeah, that too. We definitely got to do that. I mean, if we do that, then, you know, it'd be stronger. But you got to look. When I see a Philly support Philly, we talked. That, that was a slogan that was put together for the music, for the hip hop. Right. And... That is a, a a lot of black, so that's 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 you know was 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 not said you know is because I think what's understood some people hear that they don't know they don't know that and they they, they just think of me like Philly support Philly you feel I me mean? and like in this store A cap everything black owned and we try to support black businesses you feel I me mean? mm -hmm. and. We that's what we try like we buy black things, sell black things, black economics. That's what yeah. we talk. You feel me? But the fully support fully to me is like any other races. You got Italians in Philly. I'm not trying to support Italians. We try. We gotta support each other. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so that's, that's why I ain't really like that stand, and I don't think people understand what that meant. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what it. it, it I'm telling you, that's what it meant. It was that fully support fully started with the music, with the hip hop, but now black supporting blacks. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. But that's. Definitely. Mm. We with that. I mean, if if black supported blacks, we didn't we wouldn't even have to say fully support fully in the music. It's funny, like a, like an elder told me, they was like, how can you have a movement if the movement is not funded by nothing, right? Yeah. And it's like, like ACAV, like they're like, well, this place is special is because they sell their own products, make their own products, distribute their own products. So they're a manufacturing company and distribute. So if people came and supported ACAV, we could create funding to do more and more things because it's, it's within us. But also people should take the, the same concept of doing for self, yeah. building for self and supporting self like they say the Jews do, like they, like in other races, they make sure they support their people. And it's like, that's what I feel like, if we all, like you said, you said that though, we all support each other at Currency Flow. It, 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 we, we, I feel like we can create, cause then we can buy venues or at least venues and try to buy them later and we can do more here. But like you said, we don't have the mentality cause like, like when I was in Atlanta, they had the mentality of supporting each other. Like it's a, it's, it's a mentality. It's like, I went down there and I was selling my, my brand t-shirts with Legendary and they were just buying them off me without even really reading them first. Like, <laughs> well, you gotta look at it like this. You got a whole, you got about 600 years of reconstruction. Mm. And I mean, to, 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 to tear down that, like you said, we wasn't taught that. We was taught actually the opposite. That's why you had to fill nigga in the house nigga. And that's that's where it started. At. And if that do, do that make sense to you? Uh, you bring it down to you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, bring it go. Yeah, yeah. So you got the field nigga, then you got the house nigga. Now the field nigga, he out there working for master, picking the cotton, or doing that. They live out in the shack or the outhouse or you know the the the, the shed. Yeah, 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 I understand that. And that rich nigga, he live with, I mean, house nigga live with this. And the house nigga living there with Master. Master, yeah. Now, he got a good in there. He get to eat the scraps directly 
off a massive plate or whatever he he, he in there is warm in there. Right. So he got more privileges and perks than the field nigga. Right. Now the field nigga, they the house that the 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 master don't gotta whip you no more. Cause they gonna send the house nigga out to do the job. Right. Now the house nigga fillers though, you know, he could puff his chest up a little bit. Nigga, I'm eating better than you. I dress better than you. I'm living in the master house. Yeah, y'all get out there and do that. Do you think people are programmed to not it's support a program. their own people? It's a programming. It's a programming. You think the house nigga and the field nigga got? Right. No. We, we striving unprogrammed. Because when the field nigga want to rise up and rebel, mm -hmm. who the first nigga that's going to tell him you tripping? The house nigga. Don't y'all start that shit. And get me kicked out the house. Cause y'all wanna uprise and take over masses. Right. So you gotta you that's what that's what I say there's a whole lot of shit that gotta be reprogrammed. So gonna tell them. Are you gonna write a book? You're gonna tell them. Are you gonna write a book, man? Like you mean you got some time, man. We need a book. We need, yeah. we need it. It's coming so soon. Story. Yes, your, your, your point. Yeah, yeah. Thoughts on Kanye and all that, um, what he said about the Jewish people and how he lost the deal with um Adidas or Nike. I think Kanye, uh, I think he's very passionate. Very, I don't think I know he's a very passionate person. Uh, Kanye going to say what he want. He going to say what he feel, right, wrong, or indifferent. And... When, when, we, when we know that, Sometimes people get uh, the message missing screwed when they already put the messenger in a particular box. So it all depends on what part we say. If you, if you, out of the whole Kanye ordeal when he went on drink champs and. He was talking when Kanye gathered himself. He said, "When when Nori was trying to, you know, save his job or his, or his relationship with whoever he dealing with, he kept telling no oh, Kanye, but we loved you." Kanye message was, "All right." You want to keep going there with it. How about I say it like this? I'm jealous of the Jews. I'm jealous the way they do this for each other. And that's his whole man. I'm jealous the way they don't abort their children. I'm jealous the way that they stay married. I'm jealous the way how they support each other and help each other businesses. Basically, Kanye is calling to action uh, to the black successful, his black successful pairs. You know, you look at it, and this is just my point of view. Everybody's, quote, unquote, black excellence, black excellence. And, you know, they had a little luncheons and whatever they do. But where the black excellence at when you, when you, when you turn your back on somebody that you know is telling the truth? You know, he tell her, even if you don't believe in him, his 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 the religious part uh -huh. of Kanye's thing, the fact that us as black men need to unite together and create our own thing, our own stuff, then where that's at. And that's what Kanye whole thing is like, yo, when we gonna wake up, we here now. I'm a couple billion strong. You a couple billion strong. You a billion strong. You a billion strong. Why we keep waiting on to get approved from them? We got the resources. We got the resources. Let's go. But they ain't going to do that. Why mm -hmm. not? It go, like I said, you got your field, nigga. You got your house, nigga. I mean, they made it. They there. 
they cool with with them and and whoever they deal with. They ain't for the people. They for their people. Still a part of the drugs. No, sir. No, sir. So. Damn, that's heavy. That's heavy. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciate how you said that. Down. Yeah, that was I, yeah. I appreciate how you just broke that down. Yeah, it was kind of what he meant and everything. Yeah, that's what he's telling you. Like when he was when he was saying that he's, he's like, yo, man. These people, like you, gotta look at it. Oh, in the entertainment business, whether it's sports, music, film, who owns it? Right. Who owns it? Europeans, Jewish white people. Who own it? Yeah. Kanye made all these billions of dollars. But who own it though? These people talking about putting out his sneakers without his name in it. People calling him an idiot. Shut up. They gonna take your mic. Kanye like nah. I'm gonna take a stand on that. Yeah, you, you was building on the Kanye, and, and I was the truth. Wasn't Kanye got his first placement yeah. on the truth? Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's, that's the beginning. Was that the first single that you wanted to drop when you came up? <clears throat> the, uh, nope, that's crazy, because it wasn't. My first single, I wanted it to be What Your Life Like. <laughs> what Your Life Like, mine's yeah. new. Everything, son. See, I was on that. It was either that or uh, Rob for my niggas. Mm. That's what I wanted to be. Oh, you trying to come out like that? Yeah, that was me. Okay, that was so. Damn, so who? So that's Beans. Yeah. Damn, that's heavy. That's heavy. Who made them beats? You remember? Uh. Shit. Damn. I think. Uh. Long time ago. I think Shim. Hmm. I believe. And they probably didn't want that, them to drop because you had that Kanye beat, and it's like it's probably when Kanye was. Rough. Nah, no, but Kanye wasn't. That was Kanye first placement. Mm. Yeah, that was Kanye first placement, so he wasn't Kanye yet. Yeah. That was Kanye. He wasn't. He wasn't yeah yet. Yeah, he wasn't yeah yet. You gave you gave him the name yet? Yeezy, Yeezy, no, not yet. Yeah, you give him the Yeezy, no. Yeah, Yeezy. Uh, Kanye West had an interview on. He's about to get robbed one time. And you saved him. That's what he said. Right. That that church by that said six flicks. Did you yeah. save his life? Yeah. I want to say, oh, I saved his life, but I, I, uh, he put the he put the uh, the bat signal out, and I responded. Yeah, he just said, "Sound drink chance to get you to get you some money. We gonna give you some money." Did he ever like you mean do something, or he was just talking? I might I'm not at liberty to say. Oh okay. okay. <laughs> I respect that. Okay. Um, Scarface. Yeah. I feel like I feel, um, you you look up to him. He's one of your favorites. Yeah. Like why like why is one Scarface? Like people say he's one of the best. Why do you say he's one of like he's that boy? I was a Scarface fan even before I really started taking rap serious. Like when I was like in the sh street, young, trying to find myself, Scarface was just that was my music. That was that's that's what I that's what I listened to every day. Every day I listened to Face. His his, I mean his delivery, his storytelling. Face was just he could just paint that picture. Mm. Yeah, it was Face, Scarface first, then Big. I don't think, I think before, nobody really painted a picture like Scarface. I, w I would say, yeah, I, it was Big. Came after Face, so Face first, Big second. I remember, um, like back in the day, it was always on um, state property and major figures back in the day. Yeah. And I remember y'all was like beefing back in the day. 
Yeah. yeah state property. And I remember, like, he said, you and Gilly was uh, mixing down South Street. Y'all was fighting down South Street. Yeah. Yeah, did that transpire? Did that happen? That's what they said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> because I was both from your prime and all that was like the two hottest in the city, you know what I'm saying? So it was like Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So if you get a new album with Scar's face to be on that one, you're gonna call the OG album. The OG that, album. Made that call. Yeah. I gotta make that call. And I, yes. and I can see you and Chris being on it. Yeah. Who else? Who else? Let's let's play that game. Who else you think you would have on it? Look, I, I see. I'm trying to manifest a, a tape, an album, a new piece of work from you. Something, something current. So we got Scarface. We got Young Chris. We got Ryan Osley. <laughs> yeah, we can make that happen. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. We got the connection. We got the respect. Who else? Who else we got? We need like three more. Three more. You know, I always wanted to do a song with. I never. Nas. Oh. I was Nas. Nas. I see that. Wow, that's heavy. Never like, a, like, me and Nas was on a song together on, on, uh, on Puff, one of Puff albums. But I always wanted to, like, one of my albums to have a Nas. Mm -hmm. That's Nas. Yeah. Fair call you after this. Oh yeah, we gotta do that. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that'd be legendary. Talk about the time that you got hit, that you got shot. How did that change your life? Which time? <laughs> um, the last time. Uh, the news came out, everybody was talking about that. Yeah. Or how many times did you throughout your life? I don't know. Uh, they had 11 holes in me that don't belong there. Uh, 11 holes in me that don't belong there. Yeah. Yeah, it changed a lot. Changed a lot. Changed my voice. Uh, Physically, I got a couple body parts missing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that was a rough one, right? The, the last time that was a rough one. You know, it was a blessing to be able to like, survive something like that. Alive, I'm alive. That's what, man, what you doing? Alive. Mm. Yeah, that's deep, yeah. Like you seem to do a lot. Like you just look through your music for one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your music tell you all the pains and you've been locked up a lot. What was what was what was Joe like? What was that experience like being in jail? Yeah, you've been through. What's jail? Yeah. Mm. You can be in jail on the street. Yeah. True. Yeah. Incarceration. What was that like? Um shit. CFCF, what was that like? Never made it. Well, Never. Shit. FDC. <laughs> For me. All fat. Fat on. Um, shit, like jail. Baby, you telling you wanna, what to do, want to do it? You ever been in jail? No. Nah. Yeah, you don't go. Yeah. Jail for suckers. Yeah, inshallah, I don't want to. Inshallah, yeah. <laughs> that ain't no place for no human being. Mm -hmm. Um, you and um, Jay Z and all that, uh, your relationship, do you ever see yourself like being like friendship again? Not saying I'm not friends now, but like in the future, like in your 60s or 50s, do you, do you see that? I don't know, man. It ain't, uh, I really don't think about it. Right. I really don't think about it. Like I said, Rockefeller, the music and all that, that was just one chapter of my life. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the future will. And that's what I feel like from this interview. Like I just like even even 
like looking like I said, looking at your past interviews, I'm like, Beans is on something, I was saying like Beans is on something different now. Like he's on a whole new, like he's like you evolving, like to another state. And then that's why when you even said father and being present, like I'm like, I could feel that because you spent at least 20 years outside. <laughs> right, more than that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like outside, so it's like now everything's slowing down for you. That's why honestly I do see like like a book or like you get into like movies, like how you like you know what I mean stuff like that, because you're more like you more chill. I don't see you running around all crazy again. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. like do you see? Do you can you see? Like, is there anything in your mind state? Like, like after? I'm not, it's never after fatherhood, but it's like, okay, I'm ready to come back out in production or like clothing or. Whatever. Well, this is, man, they gonna kill. It's a, it's it's three books right now being read. Hmm. Three books. I can't. I don't wanna. No title. You know, too much. Uh, one of them is one of them is called Beans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the third the, 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 is another book that's being written and it's called uh, I Once Met a Man You Thought You Knew I Once Met a Man You Thought, mm -hmm. you, thought you Knew there we go mm -hmm. okay that's a deep job mm -hmm. yeah that's the Beans book. And I once met a man. Don't you know? So it's happening. They're being, and they're currently being written. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we get news. Cause it's like all that, like all that wisdom. Cause then you, you, you had wisdom. Like, like you tell, like you've been telling stories from the beginning. But it's like, mm -hmm. like you live through it. Then you, like you say, you're a present father. You're not going to worry. Not going to worry. Like you're a present father. So it was like, you know, I would love to, like, like I feel like that's that's that is your next level of like, okay. This is the evolution of beings of going from this to this to going through all you went through. You went through a lot of shit. <laughs> like, yo, like you went through a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like, what they say, uh, uh, the head on the crown. You know what I mean? Like, that is the head that wears the crown. Thank you. That is the head wears the crown. So you, you did it. So it was, I, would, I would love to read your story. You know what I mean? Like, that's something to break you came through to tell, to just build with us. Um, because you don't have to do that, but it's like, but it's like, I hope you did it because we need the wisdom. Mm -hmm. We need the wisdom. Your grandpa now. <laughs> pop pop beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. pop pop yeah. beans. Like, oh, would you like um a movie about your life? Would you like that? Uh, yeah, we're working on that. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. He's just being, he's being humble. He's been quiet about it. Yeah. He's gonna bust out. Yeah, yeah. Crying is real. Sometimes you just gotta this move us out. Yeah, because people are blocking. I want to ask you for uh, for advice and all that. What we doing? Um, what you think the best way we can build? What we doing? Our platform, ACAP, our store. You feel me? Our neighborhood. Some advice that you got for us. I would say like what y'all doing now, as far as the interviews and, and things like that, I would be more diverse in the people that I would bring onto the plat your platform. For example. Uh what? I would I would bring more instead of just bringing rappers onto the show, I would bring strong black entrepreneurs, period. Yeah. I would uh I would explain uh y'all infrastructure on what y'all do. Mm. I will figure out a way to curate that to 
deliver that to uh, the black businesses that y'all want to support. Like you said, y'all make your own product. Y'all uh, distribute your own product and things like that. When I look at some of the products that y'all have in here, I would, you know, shampoo, the shampoos, the the, 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 the soaps, shea butter. Yeah, I would, I would target uh, black-owned businesses that use these type of products. Mm. Like uh, black owned barbershops, black owned beauty salons, and things like that. Uh, the herbs and stuff that y'all have over there. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, you know, source those things out and try to see where y'all can create a medium where as though y'all make these products for yourself, but y'all might want to, like, like how y'all deal with uh, the coffee and y'all joint partnership. I will go partnership with. Well, uh, other people, I got, yeah, I got you. Yeah, other people, and you know, create products for them. That's heavy. Yeah, that's what that's what I would uh I would do. Gotcha. Because I always to me I always look at like media, um, as a chance to increase themselves. You feel me? Like television. You feel me? Watching the NBA, the commercials and all that really pay 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 for everything. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I watch platforms like. Of Vlad TV, they got all these followers, you know what I'm saying? They can really sell whatever because they got so many views, you know what I'm saying? But you got to look. Say this product right here. Yeah. This y'all product, right? Yeah. This shampoo. This y'all product. So, I would, how much do you sell this product for? It's $10. Well, all right, whatever you sell it for. Right. So, you know how much, yeah. you know how much you pay to, to make this product. Right. Everything for the bottle, the top, you know, your whole layout for that. So what I would do is I would try to see how to make this product and, and scale it upward. And if you make, you selling this for $10, should I go in to the, uh, the stores and this shampoo's in there for $15, $16. So, you know, you're making a profit by selling this for $10. Why not take your same product that you're making? If you go out to, uh, like you said, the barbershops now is a must that they got to get their hair washed. So let's just say he got a barbershop. Let's just say uh, this person right here got a beauty salon, whatever her beauty salon is. Uh Let's just, for example, uh, Crazy Hands. She's one of the biggest, you know, in the city, black-owned business. So this product that I sell for $10 is now going to be inside Crazy Hands. And instead of it looking like this, you know it's your product. You know you're getting your $10 for it. You put it in our store, and she's selling it now for Fifteen dollars. Gotcha. But it got crazy hands on it now. Huh. Huh. It's actually fifteen. This fifteen dollars. All right. Well, put it out thing, and she could sell it for eighteen dollars. You know what I'm saying? She not paying for, you know, the production of it. So you put her name on it, and you change it up, but still. Uh, this product is manufactured by okay. ACAF for crazy hands still getting your 10 hours. Right. Mm -hmm. So you still make a profit. Now she making three, four dollars off of every bottle. Mm -hmm. So you did yeah, this for you. Mm -hmm. So and then this way you could you could scale up and you can probably be supplying every barber shop and hair salon in the city, but you shampoo conditions. Motions. I, I gotta ask you this question because your mind, you know, broke it down. With the wisdom you have now, what would you have done differently? And I seen you have to, not even seeing they have regrets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like cause
no, you love you are you today. But like, if you be like, okay, damn, I get this. Like, this is what I've done differently in my career to maybe get a different outcome over here. Uh, but what I've done differently. I would have probably paid more attention to the business side of things. Mm -hmm. Learned the business. That's it. Learn the business. That's simple. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's simple, man. Yeah. My question on who is on some of your political leaders, like some people that you look up to? Political leaders? Yeah. I don't get into politics. Oh, okay. I ain't a political person. Mm -hmm. Well, when we say, well, our, it's, it's not just political, it's not, all right, how about some like... Political heroes? Rebel, <laughs> radical. People like in the, like in the culture. Now or... Yeah, it could be, it could be dead. It could be dead or not. I don't really think it's too many a lot now. Because most somebody, it's who somebody you know, so. <laughs> Or like somebody that you respected more likely. Like, like me, myself, Marcus Garvey. Somebody yeah. I respect so. And Ashaka Zulu, Kamathi, people like that. Matt Turner. Turner. Malcolm X, yeah. Yeah. Like how you said that first, Matt Turner, Malcolm X. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to Geronimo. Oh, shit. You're going to be quiet. Uh, <laughs> no, that was a... That was a damn, that turn that. Yeah. Malcolm X and Geronimo. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's a good three, though. Like, you know what I mean? No, I appreciate that. Appreciate Try it. and put it in the... Uh, Matt, I think Matt, Malcolm, and Geronimo, even though he is native Indian, but they 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 was about action. They was about action. And that Turner, he was that, you know, he was on for sure, for sure. He was on. Yeah. He was like, we ride. He was ride. They wasn't going for it. Geronimo really wasn't going for it. He was smoking them pale faces. Yeah, he was smoking <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, we ride. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like that we can even like the I mean the beginning to the ending, like South Philly is like you you rep South Philly heavy and and I, I and it's like I'm from South Philly as well. So it was like only I'll I'll be telling people it's like like when you from South Philly it's just like it's like it's like it's different. It's like you can rep Philadelphia, period. Yeah, you rep Philadelphia, your name's Beanie Siegel. You got a Siegel from 25th Siegel. It's just South Philly. 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 You from South Philly. Why I rep That's Philly, period. You rep How you get the name of uh, Broad Street Bully? Uh, I forgot what part. I think Dame. Mm -hmm. Dame and Dad. But it comes from the Flyers, though. For those who don't know. Philadelphia Flyers, the year I was born, 1974. The 74-75 season, they won the Stanley Cup. And they were smashing shit. And they was, they was, you know, hockey, you could fight. Right. They were fighting there. They was beating everything the fuck up. They was beating everything the fuck up that year, 74. I was born in 1974, so mm -hmm. yeah, that year they called them the Broad Street Bullies, the year they won the Stanley Cup. That's heavy, all right. Yeah. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do um, AR Red mean to Philly Hip Hop? AR Red. What do he mean to Philly Hip Hop? Yeah, Philly culture. That's a real good question. When keeping it too real goes wrong. 
That's one of my favorite Philly artists. I look at AR Ad. I really don't think AR knew how how big he was. Hmm. When I look at him, I'd be like, dang, cause AR took a page out of my book on keeping the real goes wrong. Hmm. Keeping it too real goes wrong. And it's crazy because I I be, you know, I I'm a globe trotter. And like I said, sometimes you gotta go away to make that comeback. I think if AR could have looked, could have separated the the street side and had more uh, information on the business side of things and and, and AR Ab would have probably been the next Beanie Siegel, if that makes sense. Um, like, I, I got people in Chicago who they, that's, they like, they love Ab. His whole everything. They they might know more AR Ab music than people in Philly do. Mm. Yeah, they yeah, AR Ab. I call somebody from Chicago right now. They call AR Ab in Chicago. That was Baby Beans. Damn. Yeah, he was strong outside of whatever you think AR Ab meant to the to Philadelphia, he meant that to a lot of people outside of Philadelphia. Well, how do you think people compare y'all to him? To each other? I mean, just the, his raw aggression and his music. And he just was real. He just was real in his music. Hmm. Too real. <laughs> Is anything you want to say to your fans, you know what I mean, that, that you know, about to check in with you and see you, you want to say to him? Stay alive. Stay sucker free. Hmm. That's it. Figure <laughs> that out. Figure out how to stay alive and keep your integrity as a man. Damn. Keep your integrity as a man. Stay alive and work on your character. And work on your character. Yeah. We appreciate you, Beans. Yes, sir. I mean, you definitely live a very budget thing out here. A little budget, bro. Mini Siegel. ACAF 221 South 52nd Street. Top some products. Uh, no.